All right, welcome back. And in this module, we're going to be looking at our first visual that we're going to focus in on, which is the Enlightened Aquarium. Here, we're going to focus in on exactly what it can do. We will also take a peek at the formatting section so you can see exactly how you can customize the visual once you've imported it. And uh, we'll just play around with it a little bit. First things first, let's make sure we understand why you would choose the Enlightened Aquarium. It's really a fun one. It's not one that you're going to use for serious business use cases. You can see the image here on the right is exactly what it looks like. So it's not necessarily something that you're going to put on a very a formal corporate dashboard. This is something that you will use for fun. It's a fun way of showing categorical data. Um, it also does help and does support multiple series. So if you have multiple types of metrics that you want to visualize on a single chart, it is able to do that. It shows different shapes of fish on the aquarium if you wanted to do something like that. Uh, this was a published by Enlightened Designs. And let's go ahead and take a look at how to use it. All right, first things first, of course, you want to go to the Visuals Custom Gallery and download the Enlightened Aquarium. If you want to follow along for this demonstration, go ahead and select Enlightened Aquarium and select to download visual, and then select a location where you'd like to download it. Once you have it downloaded, you can go back over to your Power BI desktop, which I have open right here, and I can import that custom visual by going underneath the Visualizations pane, where you find the ellipses right here, and select Import from File. You get the traditional warning that you're going to see whenever you import a custom visual. We talked about this on our introduction video. And I'll hit import. And then go find the custom visual and where I've stored it. In my case, I have stored it actually in a set of class files here called Power BI Custom Visuals slash Custom Visuals. And the file I'd like to use for this example is this one here called Aquarium. And so I'll select the Aquarium and choose Open. Now let's going to add that custom visual into my visualization pane so I can actually use it now. But you might notice that in my fields list, I don't have any fields, meaning I don't have any data that I can actually pin against this visualization. So I need to actually go pull in some data to go any farther with this example. All right, so my first step then, if I want to pull in some data, is I'm going to go underneath the Get Data section here of the ribbon, and I'll select Get Data, and I'm going to be pulling in some data from an Excel file. So I'll select Excel, the very top option here, and then choose Connect. All right. Now, I do have some data sources that if you want to follow along, you should be able to use. And you'll see it uh, in the link below as you watch this video. You'll see information on how to do download the class files. And I'm going to go pull in some information from this Power BI Custom Visuals data folder. And the folder and really the file I'm interested in for this example is this one here called Best in Show, which has a bunch of Best in Show things like animals that are most popular, stuff like that. So I'm going to select the Best in Show Excel file and click Open. Now, as I choose that and connect to the data source, you'll see this is an Excel spreadsheet or an Excel workbook that has nine different spreadsheets to choose from. The one that I'm going to pull in for this example is the one here called Most Popular Pets in the U.S. And if I select that, you can see a little preview of it on the right-hand side, but I'm going to go ahead and hit the checkbox next to it to pull that data in. On the bottom, you'll see there's an option here where I can actually load the data in as is, or I can click Edit to go into the Query Editor. If you look at the results that you see right now on the screen, we really do need to do some adjustments to this data. So we're going to click Edit to adjust prior to importing the data. This brings us into the Query Editor, the Power BI Query Editor. And there's a couple things we'll want to do to fix this. First things first, it looks like the first row has our column headers in it. So to adjust and push the first row up into the column header section, you'll select Use First Row as Header up in the very top here. So I'll select Use First Row as Header and it'll push that first row of data up into the header section. The next thing here is it looks like the next row is really kind of useless here. So what I'm actually going to end up doing is filtering out all the null data. There is some options if you just wanted to get rid of it. The, the top row, for example, you'll see there's a remove rows, and I could remove just the first row. But not only do I want to remove the first row, I also want to remove all the rows below it that are null. So if I want to do something like that, I can apply a filter on this uh, households that own a pet and hit the down arrow next to that column header, and just uncheck the nulls, and that'll get rid of all those null values for me. All right, so once I do that, I'll hit OK, and it'll return just the, the, the rows that I really care about here. Now, there's a bunch of columns in here as well. This data came from a data source, a public data source, and so there's all kinds of columns in here that I may or may not care about. And in that case, what I'd like to do is actually remove the columns I don't care about. So what I'll do is I'll select the ones I would like to keep. So I'll select U.S. Pet Statistics, this one and this one. And I'd like to remove all the other columns. You can see in the bottom here, it tells me I have a total of 24 columns. I only want to keep three of them. So I'm going to select the three I want to keep. 
and then right click on one of those three and select remove other columns. All right, so that leaves me with just the columns I care about here, okay? And one thing that you'll note here is the data types of these columns are a bit unknown. You can see the little question mark that appears next to the column header. That means they have an any data type, A-N-Y, any data type. It's really kind of a generic data type setting here. But these are metric columns that I'd like to build you know, visualizations on top of. So I want to make sure that these are identified as a metric. And there's a couple ways that you can change the data type of a column here in the query editor. You can either hit the little icon in the top left of the column header and select you know, decimal number, for example. Or I could even do this. I could select both the columns if I wanted to and come up to the data type section up in the ribbon and change it from any to a decimal number here as well. So there's a couple ways you can change data types. By the way, you can also right click on the column and change the data type there as well if you'd like. All right, so I like the data set that I have. I think I'm now ready to actually visualize this. So I'll go ahead and hit close and apply up in the top left. And that's going to bring this data into a data model. I recommend that you watch our regular Power BI course if you're interested in learning more about what a data model is, how to use that query editor I just showed more in depth, and this course, we're really focused more in on the custom visuals. All right, so now that I have the data pulled in, I can actually use the Enlighten Aquarium so that I can be able to visualize the data and show you how to use it. So I'm going to select the aquarium inside the custom visual. You can either click it or drag it into the design surface. Either works. And I'm going to make this a little larger so you can actually see it, about like that. And then what I'd like to do is I'm going to bring in the different U.S. pets, the household, uh, the number per household, as well as the total number of pets. And that way we'll be able to visualize each in the aquarium. So I'll select the U.S. pets. Okay, so you can see it at least gets me an aquarium here. That's uh, really my categorical data there is each one of the pets. And then I'll bring in the metrics for each of those pets, like the total number of pets. Okay, so you can see the total number in millions. And then maybe I also want to see the household uh, number per household here. So I have two different metrics that I'm seeing here. One is the total number in millions of pets. And then the other one is the number of uh, households that own these pets. So very different, but you can actually see there's different visuals in here for each of the different categorical types of series that I'm looking at. So the total pets here is shown as the kind of rounded fish, the oval-shaped fish, and then the triangle-shaped fish here are the ones that are the households that own this pet in millions. So two different types of data here. Now, you'll notice when you hover above the visuals, it does actually give you a little tool tip that gives you more information about the data works on both the uh, triangle shapes, shape fish, as well as the oval shape fish. You'll also notice here that you have a heading up at the top. You know, the text here is very small. You can do things like format that text if you'd like. So for example, if I want to increase the text size of the, the, the information up at the top, I can go underneath the formatting section of this chart. You'll see the little paintbrush in the middle. And if I go to the format section, I can actually, uh, when I have it selected, so you want to make sure you have the chart selected, you can actually customize the visual a little bit here. There's things like you can add a border around it. So I've added a little border here. Uh, underneath general, there's a you know, kind of the position and the width and the height of the chart. You can do some things there. You can also lock the aspect ratio. So if I hit and turn that on, what that means basically is if I resize it, it's going to keep this, this square shape that I have right now. So that's what lock aspect ratio does there for me. Um, I can also turn on a background color if I wanted to. So I can add some kind of a background color if I really wanted to. That's an option in here. So you can see the background around the fish tank. I'm going to revert that back to how it was. And then finally, the title, I can actually increase the text size. So you can look at the, look at the uh, title up here. I can bump up the text size from 8-point font to 12 or 14-point font if I wanted to. And then I can also do things like adjust the uh, layout, whether I want it to be aligned, left aligned, right aligned, or center aligned. You can also change the text color as well. So if I wanted to be more clear black there, I can certainly do that. So there's some customizations, obviously, you can do on these custom visuals. In this case, you see a few things that are available in here. Not a whole lot as far as like the color of the fish. You can't change that on here. But you do have a few options of what you can do. Now, what you can also do in addition to this is that the, the aquarium here is interactive with other visuals. So let's say, for example, I bring in a regular old table here. And I add some of the same data to a table. All right, I'll make this a little larger. And how about this? We'll actually make the text size of the table a little larger as well. Uh, you'll find that underneath the value section here. Oh, nope, not the value section. It's actually underneath the general section. And I'll bump up that up, up a couple points so we can actually see it. There we go. And so what I'd like to do is I want to show you how you can actually interact with the chart 
and show you how as you click on things in the chart, it does filter down other items in the report as well. So for example, if I click on this uh, guy right here, this is uh, dogs. And so I'm looking at dogs for the uh, total in millions. And when I select that, it filters down my chart to just show do the dog values. I can click on freshwater fish here as well. And you see whenever I select freshwater fish, it filters down to that specific set of values. Now, on this particular chart, if you want to unfilter something, you click in the background and it re resumes moving the fish and it also resumes unfiltering and showing all of the results here. The last piece to know here is this chart actually does not support multiple selecting. So I cannot actually select one and select another value like you can in some other charts. So just be aware of that. You, can't multi you cannot multi-select inside this chart. All right, so I think that does it for the Enlightened Aquarium. It's a very quick one to show. Hope you guys enjoyed this uh, session. And I look forward to our next custom visual. Thanks a lot.